Okay, so we are now recording. All right, so today we are here to talk about using videos in your PowerPoint. You know, why is it so hard and what can you do to make sure that it works and it works every single time? Okay. So uh, let me just turn off the video and let's get started on this. Okay. All right, so first of all, let's just have a look at how we go about um, putting a video into our PowerPoint presentation. So I'm using PowerPoint um, 2013. Uh, if you have a .edu, um, uh, .au email address, which you do at the university, you have access to, um, uh, to Office 2016 for free, so either for Mac or for PC. So Office 365 you can get for free. If you go to the Technology Services website, they'll show you how. Okay, so when I'm here, I go into my insert and they have moved where they used to be. They used to be in this little section here, but now they've moved them all the way across here to the media section. So from here, you'll see that I've got video. I've got online video. I've got video on my PC. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a video on my PC and we'll talk about online videos a little bit later on. So I'm going to click on video on my PC and I've got a video just there. So I can just double click on that or I can insert. Now see here you've got these video files so we can see all the types of videos that you're able to um, insert. So it used to be just certain types that you could do. So um, the preferred was the um, WMV, so the Windows, um, what's that called? Windows Media Video or something like that. But now you'll see you can put in pretty much anything. So .movs, um, MP4s and so on. Just going to click on insert and that's going to pop that in there for me and I've got a little button here so I can preview that video if I want to excellent I can move it along and have a look and so on okay all right uh, now once I've got the video selected you'll see that I get my video tools and so I've got my format and my playback options so I can put it into a frame I can uh, make it look like that. I can resize it. I can do all sorts of things with my video. So I can put that right in the middle like that. So it looks like a postcard. Um, and I can put video borders on it and all those sorts of things. But the really interesting stuff comes in the playback. Okay. So let's just have a look here. What I've got is I've got a play button there to preview it. Remember that I've also got this button here that I can preview it with. Let me just make that smaller again so we can see what's going on. Excellent. Um, I can do things like add bookmarks. So I can actually timestamp um, this video as it plays as well. And I can trim the video. So the video editing tools within PowerPoint itself are not brilliant, but you are at least able to um, change the start and end times. So I can come in here and I can watch um, the video and I can do change my start and end time and I can trim it and so on. I can either just drag these here or I could actually change the times here if I want to. Okay, just hit cancel on that one. I can also fade in and out. See, I've got these buttons here to fade in and out as well. I can change the volume or I can decide to put it on mute, something like that if I would like to. And then I've got this, do I want to start it on click? So do I want to actually click on the video uh, when I start it or do I want it to start automatically? There are other things that you can do in here. So if you wanted to, you could put some media buttons in there. So to start and fast forward and, and those sorts of things. You could um, put, set up a trigger so that when you click on a different object, um, it would then play as well. So there's different things you can do. We can play full screen. We can hide when while not playing. You can loop until stopped and you can rewind it after playing as well. So you've got all sorts of little video options there. Yeah. So that all looks easy enough, hey. Uh, but we all know that when we um, then take our video, take our presentation with videos in it somewhere else, it doesn't always work. Things have improved a great deal. So what used to happen back in the day, back, oh gosh, I think it was, 2010 I think when we started to be able to actually embed video is before that what would happen is that when you inserted a video it would actually put a link to the video so the video would not be part of your PowerPoint file a lot of people didn't realize that so they would save their PowerPoint file and they would stick their PowerPoint file onto a USB stick they would go to a different computer and not realize that because the video was actually linked rather than embedded within the presentation that the video file would not come with them um, and so that would then obviously cause it to fail. Um, now, you can still link instead of embedding, 
um, embedding is what it does automatically uh, but of course that does mean that your video file that your PowerPoint files become very very big so if you're working on a file with somebody else and you're trying to share it and you're trying to email it or anything like that you can have real problems if you've got embedded video so you can still link few tips for you with linking what you want to do is you want to have your presentation file and your video files in the same folder okay so move your video files and your presentation into the same folder uh, and then set up the links that makes the links relative so that when you move that whole folder uh, you won't break the links okay because otherwise let's say you've got your video sitting in a in a particular folder and you've got your presentation sitting in a different folder if you then copy them both onto a USB stick it will lose the link between them so it's always best um, to put them in the same folder uh, Another problem that we used to have and a problem that you will have with linking is that there is a character limit on how long the link can be. So why do you care about that? Well, what I would say to you is that when you're um, creating presentations with videos in them, I always put them directly on my C drive of my computer. So right down at the C drive, I can show you actually here uh, where I go to, if I go to my Windows C, You'll see here I've got a, a folder that's called presentations and that's where I put any fold, any presentations that have got videos in them. Um, and that's just to stop the that problem with the character length being um, only so long because here at the university if I save to say my documents folder that's actually a really quite a long path file already because it's actually saving it onto my U drive so it's got my username and things like that on it. So it actually makes the my documents folder actually quite a long path. Okay. All right, so that's what used to cause problems for people is their video wasn't embedded, it was linked, um, and those links, um, either they forgot to take their video with them, they didn't realize, so they didn't take their video with them, or if they did then move the video and the presentation file to a USB stick, the link between them broke, okay? All right, so that's one of the issues that you can have. Another issue that you can have when you are playing um, videos on other computers is that when videos are created there are these little things called codecs okay now I'm not particularly um, a technical person all I know is that videos are encoded with particular codecs and it depends how the video is created and um, which sort of codecs it is created with the problem is if the computer you're trying to play the video on doesn't have the right codecs on it then it cannot play the video okay um, now that used to be quite a big problem, but nowadays most computers have got a huge array of codecs on them, so you shouldn't find you have that problem too much anymore. If you are playing on another computer and it can't play back a video, two things you can do, you can either re-encode the video, and um, so I use a product called Super, um, and that's a, a free tool for doing video encoding, um, or you can use a, another um, tool which does the opposite thing. So rather than encoding your video, it looks at the computer and sees what codecs are missing from that computer and then points you at places on the internet you can download them from. Um, that little product is called G-Spot. Be very careful if you are searching the internet for G-Spot. Make sure you say G-Spot and video codec. All right. So that's another issue that you can have is that the computer that you're going to play on um, it does not have the correct codex. Um, you will find that um, unless you're using um, proprietary software to create your videos that shouldn't be such a problem for you anymore but that could be another problem. Uh, other problems that you can have with video playback is just around the computer you're playing it on. If it doesn't have the resources um, available to play your video then that will cause you problems. So the larger the video um, the more grunt the computer has to have. Uh, you will find some tips around this if you go to your file um, on if you go to file and you can see here I've got media size and performance and I've got my compressed media so I can hear um, I can make sure it's presentation quality internet quality or low quality um, so this is allows me to compress that media to make this a smaller um, a smaller size so you'll see here that the media files in this presentation are 40 megabytes so I've got for that one little video which is about um, six seconds long is 40 megabytes okay which is making the size of my presentation rather large okay 
Um, but you'll notice here as well, you've got more ways to improve media performance. If I click on that, it's going to open up some PowerPoint help. And this helps um, and tells us how to go about uh, improving the playback and compatibility. Okay, so there's all sorts of things here, some tips for you. Um, and we've got here the, uh, this, is, this used to be really handy, this file options advanced display and disable hardware graphics acceleration. Um, that used to cause a little stuttering in videos, so that um, can be a really handy thing to know. Um, what you, um, also what you want to do is make sure you don't have too many other things running in the background. So if you've got a lot of windows open, so if I've got a lot of stuff running in the background, um, that's also going to cause problems. Um, the other thing that you might want to do if you're having problems too is the old classic. The old classic of turn your computer off and turn it back on again. That just clears out the temporary memory um, and it just gives your computer the thinking space that it needs to play your videos. Okay. All right. Um, so you'll see there's lots of tips in here. There you go. There's even um, clearing out your temp folder and so on. So lots of um, tips that you can have there. All right. Uh, so my my top tip for making sure uh, to make sure that it guarantees that your PowerPoint presentation and your video file both work is to take your own computer. That is just the simplest, easiest way to make sure it works. If it works on your computer in one room, it will work on your computer in another room. Uh, but that's not always possible, obviously, if you're going doing something like a conference. Uh, my other top tip is to always make sure that you have something up your sleeve that you have an alternative that you have that your entire presentation is not dependent on this one video working okay all right so that's about embedding videos I'm going to talk about online videos in a moment but I'll just pause and see if we have any questions so far Okay, so no questions. Raise your hand if you're frantically typing right now. Okay, so let's now talk about online videos. I can't talk about online videos without talking about copyright. Um, if you are going to be using a video, any kind of media in your presentation, you need to make sure that you have the right to use it. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about copyright uh, and um, the university and, and what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do, there is an online course so, um, that you can do. You should already have been enrolled in, so there's an online course that you can do that you'll find through my uni. Um, uh, or you can contact the library. Um, or you can speak with your supervisor as well. They should have some information, but library has some good information. The Legal and Risk website um, of the university also has some useful information. And there is, as I say, there is an online course you can do, which also explains um, uh, all, around, all about copyright. So having said my thing about copyright, uh, if you want to include something like a YouTube video, or um, for example, what I would normally do in that circumstance is I would write to the author and ask them if I could have permission and if they would mind sending me a copy. Um, you'd be surprised how often that works. Uh, and if they send you a copy, then I would go about out in bed. The problem with online videos is you need to guarantee that you have a, um, an internet connection and that you have a stable internet connection in order to play back that video. So as I say, I would, write for, I would write to the author for permission and also ask if they could send me a copy of it. Um, there are, I'm sure if you do a quick search of the internet, you will find all sorts of things that you can use to download videos from the internet. I would strongly advise you against doing that. Um, stuff that's free is never really free. Um, so uh, it can cause you problems it may be what we would call bloatware uh, so you may find that it's um, it just run causes your computer to run very slowly you may find that it downloads all sorts of toolbars you may find it downloads a virus um, so 
I would be very cautious about doing that. Um, instead, what uh, what you would want to do is, as I say, is to make sure that the venue, if you are going to another venue, is speak to them about uh, the Wi-Fi situation, speak to them about the internet, whether or not you'll have access to the internet. If you don't, uh, you could set up your phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, or um, alternatively, as I say, try and get hold of a copy from the actual author. All right. Any questions about using online video? Okay, any questions? All right. Oops. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would actually in, um, add a an online video. So it's a couple of different ways that you can go with this. Uh, we've got here, we've got our video, We've got our online video here. Um, so if you do have a, um, a YouTube um, uh, that you know of, you can put it in there, or you can paste an embed code in here as well. So you will find that you have got um, uh, these embed codes you will find in different places. So let me just pop this in here. Let's go to YouTube. And let's go to my channel here okay so where we've got um, things such as here we go we've got getting started with orchid so if I come to here let me just pause that so it doesn't start okay uh, oops let's see oops Sorry, I couldn't see that for a moment. There it is. We've got share. Um, so I've got the that gives me then the um, the URL for it. I've also got here embed. So this is my embed code. Okay. So we've got that share and we've got the embed. And from there, uh, I can just copy that. Control C to copy that. And when I come in here, I can Control V. Okay. There we go. Click on insert, and that is going to insert that. Eventually, while it's just having a think, you see it's saying PowerPoint is inserting media, so it's just having a think about it. And there we go. Okay. Now, there's one more thing that I would like to show you in here, uh, and that is how we go about actually using um, PowerPoint's own videoing tools. So you can do videoing from within PowerPoint, so if I come from in here and I go insert, you'll see here I've got screen recording. So I can go to do an insert of a screen recording. And from here I could say, okay, I want to show people how they can um, embed videos. So I can come here. You'll notice I've got this little uh, thing here with, I'm gonna record the pointer or not. I can click on the record here. And Okay, so from here I can say we want to hit the share button and then we want to hit the embed button and then we can copy that. Okay. And then I can stop. Okay. All right, so we'll see here that now when I go to play that, oh, double talking. Um, so with that, here we go, let me just put that onto mute. So you can see there, that's that little video that I just created. Uh, if you wanted to um, uh, use this video for something else, so this is really a great tip for you, uh, is I can now right click that and I can say save media as, and that would allow me to then save that X out of PowerPoint as well. So that's how you can use PowerPoint to create videos too. There you go, which not many people know that you're able to do. Okay, 
So that's everything. That, oh, no, sorry. There is one more thing I wanted to show you, which is how you can save your, um, your entire presentation as a video. So if I go to my file button, so I go to my backstage view, from here you'll find you've got a button that says export. So from the export menu, you have create a video. So creating a video allows you to choose, am I going to use, you know, which quality of video am I going to use? Uh, I can say we don't use recorded timings and narration, or I do if I have um, timings and narration in my file, I could use those. I can then, it actually allows me from here to record my timings and narration and preview them. Uh, what I can also do is, here is seconds spent on each slide. So because I don't have uh, recording timings and narrations, I can change how long we stay on each slide. And then I just hit the button that says create video. Um, it takes a little while and obviously depending on the size, but that's a really easy way for you to create your own videos. So you can have slides in there that last a couple of seconds maybe for the start to explain what the video is about. Then you can have another slide with the video, your screen recording video on it. You can use your um, webcam as well to create videos. And then you could put a little outro slide on and then you can save the whole thing as a video. So uh, if you're just doing simple videos, it's not a bad little tool. Uh, what with it being one you already own and one that you probably know how to use. And that is everything I can tell you about PowerPoint and videos. Any questions? Okay. All right, I've just launched a poll there. So um, we do like to get your feedback on what you think of these webinars, whether it's worth us carrying on with them. Uh, we are going to be closing down for the summer holidays. Uh, we will be back in February. Uh, oh, I do have a question. If I create a video from a presentation containing a video, would the video in the presentation play? Yes, it would do. Okay. So that is a very good question. All right, any other questions? I'm just gonna close that poll in another 10 seconds and we'll just see whether we have any other questions. Okay, and that polling. And I don't see any other questions. If you are asking a question, if you're typing a question right now, just raise your hand so I'll know not to Finish. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much everyone for attending and for supporting us through the year with this new thing that we've been trying out with doing these webinars. Uh, we hope that you have found them useful. Don't forget to contact us at it.training at adelaide.edu.au if there's anything in particular you'd like us to cover in the webinars next year. So say we are going to break up for the summer holidays and we will be back in February. So um, I'd like to thank Ali as well for helping all year uh, with answering your questions and for managing the recordings. The recording of this webinar will be up on YouTube by this afternoon. Uh, and other than that, thank you very much for your support. I hope you have a lovely holidays. And uh, we will see you in the new year.